What's up guys, this is Jake with Musician on a Mission. Just wanted to let you know that we've got a special treat for you today. We've got a video from our friends over at mastering.com. Let's jump in. Hello friends, Dane here with mastering.com. Hope you're all doing well today. I wanna to get back into the DAW and demonstrate the SSL Native Essentials Bundle. Specifically, I'm interested in seeing how their version of the bus compressor compares to that of the Waves version. Last video I did, we compared the Waves SSL G bus compressor to the Logic version of that same VCA style compressor. To be clear, I'm not an affiliate marketer or ambassador of SSL but I use their emulations quite a bit for mixing and mastering. And they had a deal on their native essentials bundle, which includes both the channel strip and the G bus compressor. They both have pretty much the same layout and features with slight differences in the plugin interface, but there's one unique feature of the native version of the bus compressor that I really like that uh, waves version does not have. And it's particularly useful for mastering and bus compression. So let's roll the intro and take a look. Before we jump in, just a reminder to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell to get the good stuff on all things mastering. Okay, if you didn't know already, SSL came out with their native version of the bus compressor a while ago but it updated in 2021 with some new features that I really, really like, and we'll demonstrate those here. Both the Waves and native versions of the SSL bus compressor are based off of the G-Series console, uh, the G-Series 4000 console from the 1980s. So they're essentially modeling the same compressor found on that console. So let's go ahead and jump in and see what's up into our logic session here we have the ssl bus compressors the waves version on the right here um, and the native version on the left right off the bat uh, we can notice that the interface is pretty much the same in terms of like uh, the overall layout of the knobs we have threshold makeup gain attack and release in the same exact sort of layout here okay and you can ignore the fade off button here uh, with the rate s that has to do with uh i think sort of like fading out a song and how it compresses and reacts to that for the purposes of this demonstration what i want to focus on are two new elements to the ssl native bus compressor so in 2021 they introduced this schpf now what is that that stands for side chain high pass filter. We all know what a high pass filter is, um, or at least we should. If we don't, that's that's okay. If you're new to this stuff, high pass filter just means you're passing, your filter is, is passing the high end and it's filtering out the low end. In side chain, what that means is the compression is going to listen only to frequencies above the frequency that we set here. And you can see that it only goes up to 185 hertz, which is, that's low end, right? Anything all the way down to zero. The, the whole point of having this knob here, and the reason it would be so beneficial, is that compression tends to listen to first the low end information. So if we can filter that out, especially if we have something like in the case of this track that we've got here that I'm going to demonstrate, there's uh, an electronic kind of beat element to it, some hip hop, really transient heavy uh, beat information that when that kick comes in, it's going to clamp down a little harder rather than compressing other elements and gluing other elements together, right? So if we can filter those lower frequencies out, then the kick isn't going to cause the compressor to overreact and we can get a more even transparent compression. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, whatever we set here is this determines, okay, what are we filtering out of the input of the compressor? So what are we going to decide is not going to be heard by the compressor? everything basically above what I've got here will come through to the input of the compressor and the compressor will react. 
let's go ahead and listen and, and see just physically what's going on with the needle, right? So you can make the connection there. And then we're going to go ahead and listen and demonstrate what we're actually hearing. So first, let's go ahead and see if we just leave. Actually, I'll demonstrate first with this on. So let's put it up to like, just that's kind of arbitrary, but we just set it to whatever. Okay, 77, sure. Um, same settings, slow attack, auto release, and listen to this section of the song. And just pay attention to the needles with this sidechain high pass filter uh, set to this. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker. All right, now let's go ahead and take this off and see what happens. Pay attention to the needle when the kick comes in. So before it was hitting around like three or so, now it's hitting closer to four. So the reason that is, is because when we filtered out that low end, the compressor wasn't listening and reacting to that low end. So, in and th again, the reason why I feel like this is so useful is because I don't want, I want compression on the other elements of the track. I don't want to just compress when the kick comes in, because then it's going to duck everything out of the way and it's you're going to hear that clamping down and that sort of pumping effect. So if I can uh, more evenly compress the other elements of the track, it'll glue itself together with more transparency. Let's go ahead and listen now. So now we're not just paying attention to the needle. Now we're gonna go ahead and listen and use our ears as, as hard as we can. Make sure you're using really good headphones or speakers at best. So um, let's go ahead and listen. Let's start with this on. So we'll filter out um, up to 80 Hertz. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch You've already moved on To someone else while crying in bed This is the ugliest I've been Cause all I think about is you Cool. Let's go ahead and take it off. I took one look, it caught me like Pay attention to how the instrumental reacts in the in the vocal. So it's pretty, it, it's subtle, but it's there, especially in the beginning. Listen again to when the beat first comes in with the kick. Particularly the vocal in relation to the kick. I can hear a little bit more clamping down. Let me put it back up. Do that one more time. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch You've already moved on to someone else while crying in. Yeah, I love that. So again, this is super useful, especially in this particular genre where we have a really ballady type melody going on. You know, this originally was like a like a like a pretty mellow uh, ballad with no beats or anything like that. It's just instrumentals and, and vocal. Now that we're kind of introducing this like really electronic beat heavy element to the, the track, I want to try to make all that sound cohesive and, and have that compression sort of glue everything together in the most transparent way possible. And to me and in my ears, having this is incredible. It just gives me so much more control over what the compressor listens to and how that's going to react uh, to the music. So um, now let's go ahead and just do a quick comparison, just straightforward comparison. Before I do that, actually, um, 
let's go ahead and, and point out one other thing. One other new element that they introduced was this oversampling. So 4x here, 2x, okay, that just, 2x just means they're doubling the sample rate, okay, that this compressor is uh, sort of like operating at. Um, and then 4x would be quadruple, of course, the original sam sample rate of the, the session. So what that's doing is just like, uh, helping to compensate for any potential aliasing or anything like that, you know, that might happen as we sort of uh, change through compression as it's going through that processing, um, the artifacts that may or may not be introduced. It's it's not something that I typically use, to be honest, because it's I haven't noticed that much of a difference. But let's go ahead and just listen and see if we can hear a difference between this and 4X. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch You've already moved on to someone else while crying in bed Okay, oversample on 4X I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch All right, I'm gonna point it out because it's it's very very subtle. But to me, what I feel is happening on the oversampling is when the snap comes in, it feels like it the reverb and the spatial element of that reverb when that comes in, that snap comes in, it feels something feels more open and there's like the slightly more depth. See if you can hear that. Pay attention again to when that snap comes in. This is without. I took one look, it caught me like a Snaps coming in right punch. here. You've already moved on to someone else while crying in bed. This is the Okay, with it on. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch. It's so subtle and it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, if we want to be a super snob here, like I guess we could have that. You know, it, it, to me, it's not noticeable enough. Maybe to you it is and that's great. Um, but I think for the sake of like our listeners, it's it's not going to make a huge difference. But that's I think that could be useful, right? Especially just depending on the type of music you're working with. I think it's going to be less noticeable with electronic elements because electronic elements are like, just by nature pretty they have artifacts themselves right there's a character or whatever but i think when maybe if you're working with uh, something more stripped back and more sort of like analog that might be something that you'd want to use that'd be useful so one more thing is this external side chain so this is if i'm wanting another signal an outside signal causing this compressor to interact so That'll be another video, external sidechain. There's things like sidechain compression on duck, ducking out, you know, a bass when a kick comes in. So you could use that and have this engaged for that. Moving on, last thing I want to show you is just the difference between, let's see if we can hear a difference at all. And if there's a preference between same exact settings here, um, my preferred setting is actually the auto. So let's go ahead and change that. Everything else should be the same. Let's go ahead and match these settings. And uh, in fact, we'll go ahead and just do apples for apples and take off this sidechain filter here. And I want to try to get that same sort of like 3 dB of gain reduction. Let's go ahead and listen. First with the uh, native. Okay, let's do this guy. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch. You've already moved on to someone else while crying in bed. This is the dude. 
I feel like, wow, that's, I really like this uh, SSL native bus compressor. It just feels like even with the way the needles are, are going, like I felt like I was almost compressing a little bit, just barely more here, and it was still more transparent. Listen, listen again. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch. You've already moved on to someone else while crying in bed. This is the ugliest I've been. Cause all I think about is you. All I think about. Okay. That's the cell. I took one look, it caught me like a sucker punch You've already moved on to someone else while crying in bed This is You're the, the clamping down. I've been Cause all I think about is you Yeah. Oh man. Uh, I love it. I really, I'm like really thrilled. Not only is, does it sound great? It looks great. I love, look, if I go in and out and get this little thing lighting up here, that's kind of inspiring to just have something with the GUI is like, it really feels like I'm using the SSL console here, like the, the, the bus compressor on the console itself. It's just really great graphics um most important that doesn't that doesn't matter at all i mean i shouldn't say it doesn't matter at all i should say it's inspiring right so anyways i hope this was helpful um kind of comparing those two really it comes down to your preference and the, and the genre is really important too here in this particular setting i needed something that was really going to help sort of bridge these elements of like lyrical, ballad -y, and electronic, right? And and try to marry those two. And it felt like this compressor did that just absolutely the best. There you have it. The new SSL native bus compressor is excellent in my opinion. And I'll definitely be using this a lot more from here on out, particularly in the case of this type of song where I'm really aiming for transparency. Remember that you might prefer the more aggressive character of the Waves version for an instrumental with transient heavy elements, so really use your ears to decide what you like while honoring the music first and foremost. More importantly than simply comparing these two emulations of the SSL bus compressor is the mindset behind proper use of compression. The proper mindset has nothing to do with operating within a strict set of rules. It's really about developing a professional level instinct as to what changing the various parameters of a compressor will do to the sonic character of the music. If you can lean into and trust your instincts with your use of compression to achieve a desired sound and be ready to explain why you're making the moves that you're making, you'll be able to achieve greater quality in far less time and the process will be far more enjoyable than just aimlessly twisting knobs. Also, that level of instinct with how you use your tools will push back on the entire production and mixing process in a powerful way that you never could have imagined. If you feel like you're someone that could really benefit from in-depth mentorship that focuses on you and your unique learning curve, your unique music and circumstances, feel free to book a call and we'll see if it's a fit to work together. Here at mastering.com, transformation is everything. If you can transform your ears, your mindset and instinct, then you'll wield the professional skills necessary to succeed in this business of professional audio. That's all for now. Happy mastering, happy music making, peace.